All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Carrie Kosnick. I'm a Quality Assurance Director in the Classification, Administration, and, and Education Department here at the WCRB. Thanks for joining this webinar today. Um, today I'm going to talk about stores, but before we get started, I just a couple housekeeping items. Uh, the P a PDF version of the presentation is available in the handouts panel of the webinar. It will also be posted on our website, and this web webinar will be recorded and posted later on our website at wcrb.com slash webinars. And if you have any questions during the presentation, you can enter them in the questions panel, and we'll try and get to them at the end of the presentation if we have time. Otherwise, I'll respond via email after the webinar. All right, let's get started. So here's the outline for today. Um, we'll review the stores industry rules, do a couple knowledge check exercises, and go over some WCRB resources. So for the stores industry classification procedures, as you probably know, the USRP contains special rules and procedures for certain industry groups. There are 17 total designated industry groups in the USRP, but not all of them have special rules. Some of the ones that you're probably familiar with that do have special rules are construction or erection and property management industry groups, just to name a couple. Uh, the stores industry group is another one which we'll be going um, in a deep dive through today, and this industry group contains 29 store classification. The image to the right shows how these industry groupings appear in the USRP. You can see at the top there is a reference to the procedures which apply to all 29 classifications in this grayed out section. Um, this is in the USRP, but if you go to our website, you can also search any uh, store classification using the class search tool, and then that um, includes a hyperlink that will take you directly to these procedures, which are in Section 4 of the USRP. The special industry classification procedures provide the following direction for how to classify a store, which is based on the type of merchandise that is sold, leased, rented, or auctioned. Unless there is specific direction in the class phraseology or footnote, the store is determined based on the highest rated category of merchandise sold, provided it exceeds 25% of the gross receipts and whether the majority of the sales are wholesale and retail. So I've underlined the kind of major points in the rule there that show you um, based on the merchandise sold and the percentage of sales. Um, online shopping and e-commerce is very common now, and although these businesses might not have brick-and-mortar store, they still need to be classified based on the products they're selling and who they're selling to. to. So a retail store that is completely online, they still um, will be assigned to 8008, if, even if they have a warehouse or QC staff. So they don't have a walk-in public like a normal retail store, but based on who they're selling to and um, what type of merchandise they're sold, they still are assignable to 8008, but just as an example. And then the standard in, uh, special industry classification procedures go on to explain the definition of wholesale and retail. Wholesale is defined as selling merchandise to retailers, manufacturers, builders, or contractors, industrial, agricultural, commercial, governmental, institutional, or professional users, other wholesalers or firms acting as agents in buying merchandise for or selling merchandise to, per to such persons or companies as those previous listed. And then retail is defined as selling merchandise to the general public for household consumption or use. These definitions can be different from some more general definitions of these terms. For example, if you have a store selling construction um, it's a selling products to construction contractors or professional musicians that walk in. They might seem like they're just the general public and it seems like a retail operation, but per the USRB SRP definition, a professional musician or contractor is a professional user. So if they're using, if they're purchasing and using the products at a job site or a recording session, this does not meet the definition of retail for workers' comp purposes because they're professional users. As mentioned before, regarding the types of items sold, you're usually using a 25% threshold as stated in the special industry classification procedures. However, there are several classifications that have more specific direction in their descriptions. Some of these are shown here. You can see we have some for 50%, 8013, 8060, 8006, 
suffix 1, and 8006, suffix 2. So these percentages supersede the 25% rule that was in the special industry classification because there's more specific direction in the footnote. There's other classifications that have these special percentages, like classification 8039 for department stores contains a specific list of conditions that must exist in order for that class to apply. So it's important to look at not only the class description, but the special industry procedures as well. So hopefully by now you've had a chance to review a few of the new classification inspection reports. Here's an example of where some of the store's information will appear, appear in the report. After you review the business description and payroll table on the first page, one of the subsequent pages, depending on how many classifications are assigned, you'll see a store's table. This will show the type of customer, whether it's wholesale or retail, and the percentage of gross receipts by product type. Uh, the key factor will include important details that support the assignment and link directly to the USRP rules and directives. So you can see all of the key information that we discussed from the special industry classification procedures in the report, what type of merchandise they're selling, who they're selling it to, and the appropriate percentages. So here you can see we have a retail clothing store but they also sell 10% additional miscellaneous merchandise um, because the clothing is 90% of the gross receipts and no other category is over 25%. This store is assignable to classification 8008. The so retail and then the 100% 8008. And then there are some other rules to note within the procedures uh, regarding repair operations. So rule D says that if a store maintains a department for the repair of items sold, they shall be classified using the following. If more than 50% of the repair jobs are for warranty repair where there's no fee to the customer, then this is a single enterprise approach. And so you wouldn't separately classify the repair operations. If 50% or more of the repair jobs are fee fee repair jobs, the store and repair department constitute multiple enterprises, and you should assign the repair operations in accordance with the multiple enterprises rule to the appropriate repair or manufacturing classification. So you need to look at the ME rule and decide how to um, classify the store based on that. And then this rule also defines what warranty repair work is. It's defined as repair work which no fee is charged to the customer and the repair work is covered under a service contract or extended warranty contract that was purchased by the customer and is not to be warranty work. And here's some more um, additional rules keeping with the repair. If a store maintains a department for the service or repair of automobiles or trucks on a fee basis, the payroll um, for of employees engaged in such service and repair operations shall be assigned to the applicable automobile, automobile or truck service or repair classification. And then just another extra rule um, about hot foods. If a store maintains a department for the preparation and sale of hot foods, sub, such operations shall be classified as 9079. And this directs the payroll of these employees that interchange between store and operations and the department in the preparation and sale of hot foods shall be assigned in accordance with the rule for division of a single employee's payroll. And so uh, we actually have a webinar coming up on the division of a single employee's payroll and keeping your records straight. So look out for that. It's coming out in December if you want to brush up on those rules. Okay, so now that you're experts in the special industry classification procedures for stores, let's go shopping and check your knowledge. So we have WCRB Foods Market, which is a supermarket that has a meat and deli department, bakery and hot food department. Most of what they sell is groceries and they also have some household goods, baked goods, hot foods, meat deli items, furniture and clothing, and it's all retail. So you can see the breakdown of the percentages of each, op of each product. What store classifications can potentially apply based on these products that they're selling? So we know based on the special industry procedures, we have to see what they sell. So we have 8006, looks like they've got some groceries. So we have the class there and then the pure premium rate. 8017 suffix one for retail. 
8015 stores furniture, and 8008 for retail clothing. So those are our potential classes that we're looking at. And so we'll move on to look at class since 8006. They have the most product. They sell groceries as the largest product that they sell. Let's look at what 8006 says. So as we looked at it earlier, this class has a specific directive that says that this store needs to sell over 50% of gross receipts in grocery items, and it lists what some of those are. And there's also a footnote directive that shows you that some operations or departments are separately classified. So we have the fresh meat, cutting and wrapping, bakery, and hot food are all separately classified. So these would be sing this would be a single enterprise if you have a grocery store with these departments. So just as a side note, when you have footnotes that direct that something shall be separately classified, that means that you can bypass the multiple enterprises rule and just apply the class. You don't need to worry about physical separation. So when you have footnotes that say the some, uh, classification shall be classified as, that's when the USRP is telling you you're either looking at the wrong class or you have a potential multiple enterprises situation. So this grocery store is a little more simplified single enterprise, although you have multiple classes that apply. So back to the knowledge check. So these are the same percentages that were on the previous screen. So let's classify WCRB foods market. We reviewed the classification phraseology and footnotes for 8006. So what items sold at this store need to be added together to determine if this class can apply? Do we need to just add the groceries for 35%, groceries and baked goods for 45%, groceries, baked goods, and hot food for 55%, groceries, baked goods, hot food, plus the meat and deli for 65%. So I'll give you a minute to kind of review the percentages, do some quick math, see if you can get a guess. All right, so the answer is 65%. If that was if you picked number four, then you're correct. So let's check out the details. So here are, the, again, the, the categories of the products they sell. Classification 006 is the right answer because we want to combine groceries, baked goods, hot food, meat, and deli. But let's look at some of the other options. And because this class is over 50, or because this, um, these items add up to over 50%, then this class is the right answer. Classification, the products that um, would, would um, be assignable to 8017 only adds up to 15%. That would be the household goods and miscellaneous items. The furniture was 10%, and then the clothing was only 10%. So you guys can see that 8006 is the correct answer for the grocery store. And the meat and deli, hot food and baked goods are all part of the grocery store sales because these are normal and usual operations for a grocery store. And all of these items are grocery items, so they are included in those sales. And so um, let's see what the inspection report will look like for these. So you can see the business description here and all of the classes that apply like I said earlier, it's a single enterprises, um, a single enterprise operation, but there are multiple there are multiple classes that apply. So you can see the bakery class for the bakery department, 9079 for the hot food preparation, and 8031 for the meat market and deli operations. And let's do another knowledge check. Now we're looking at um, Bureau Appliance Market, Inc., which operates a store selling kitchen appliances and home electronics to the general public. They sell um, ovens, dishwashers, washing machines, coffee machines, refrigerators, toasters, microwaves, televisions, and et cetera. And they have a repair department that is maintained to repair these kitchen and home appliances, both on a warranty and fee basis. So based on this information, do we have enough to classify the store and repair operations? So we know what they sell, 
but we don't know about the repair operations. So we do have enough to classify, but we need a little bit more information about the repair. So looking at 8017, we can see that it's designated as a retail store class, and it includes the sale of appliances and home electronics. So we know we've got our class 8017 is assignable to a store that sells these types of products. Now, if the repair is more than 50%, of the, um, if more than 50% of the repair jobs are on a warranty basis, then classification 8017 would apply to the repair department. If 50% or more of the repair jobs are on a fee basis, the repair department is potentially assignable to classification 9519 based on a multiple enterprises analysis. So if there is physical separation between the store and the repair, you can potentially um, look at separately classifying both of those operations, um, but you'd have to look at that analysis of, and then so right, right here we have the example um, for 8017, the pure premium rate is lower than um, the pure premium rate for the repair. So you would need to use those in your analysis and determine the governing payroll. All right, next, moving on to WCRB resources. Um, as always, we have our website, which has a wealth of information. I mentioned earlier the classification search tool is really useful to just search any class. And as I mentioned, you can search any stores class and the procedures will pop up in a hyperlink there for you to access. And then we have the WCRB publications and filings. There you can um, get links to the filings and then also the plans, the USRP and ERP. There's also a quick reference guide that shows you all of the changes um, that we've made recently in 2018 and 2019. Soon we'll have one for the 2020 changes that just got approved. Um, we have e-newsletters, WCRB news and notes, WCRB wire stories, and all of our Comp Essentials courses. You can access Comp Essentials courses on ownership, class basics, experience rating, and also we have a new one coming up about the workers' comp system and the WCRB, so that kind of um, goes through how the WCRB interacts with the whole workers' comp system. If you're a member, you get a discount on those courses, um, and if you have a group over 30, um, the cost is as low as $15 per user, so it's a great deal um, with a lot of information in it. And you also get five continuing education credits for each course. So check that out on our website and it'll go to, towards your um, property casualty and insurance adjuster license. And then also, as I mentioned before, the next class talk will be in December and that's on keeping your records straight. So it'll go over a lot of division of a single employee's payroll, also touch on some um, time card issues, some dual wage classification issues, and a lot of other good stuff. So if you have any interest in checking that out, that's coming up in December, make sure to register. And now we'll see if we have any questions. So Carrie, we had one question come in earlier on e-commerce. Mm -hmm. If you have a company that's promoting a product online, but they don't handle any of the product. They use a third party to actually stock and ship the product. What classifications would likely apply to that type of an employer? So if they're not actually handling the operations or handling the product, it's all being ordered and drop shipped at a separate location. They would just have potentially standard exception operations in California. Okay, thank you. And with regard to that type of operation, which is increasingly common, what about that third party that actually is handling the merchandise and doing the shipping of the individual orders? If they're a fulfillment operation, you're saying? So classification 8018 is a stores class. It's our wholesale stores class, and it also applies to stores that are not otherwise classified. Um, this class has a footnote in there. It describes um, fulfillment operations. So if you have um, an operation where they're receiving products storing it for someone else, and then packaging orders and processing orders whenever they come in. That's a fulfillment operation, and so that's described by classification AD18. Okay, great. Yeah, that's something that we're seeing more and more of. Um, there was another question that came in with regard to repair departments. Uh, you touched on this in the webinar. Uh, the question was, 
how do you establish whether the majority of the repairs are actually on a warranty or a fee basis? And my, my thought on that is that we're really looking to establish the majority of the employee's time. We could look at things like the number of units that are processed or billings or work orders in order to have a proxy for that. But ultimately, you're trying to determine for those repair employees, how do they spend the majority of their time on fee-based or warranty-based repairs? Yes, and in the definition um, for, in that rule, it talks about how warranty repair is defined, and it's usually in some sort of contract or um, there's a, usually a warranty repair contract it's for a limited time. All right, let's see, you got any other questions? Let's see, it looks like we have a question about the percentage of hot food that would make you rate as 90.79 in addition to the grocery store. So you don't need a percentage of hot food. If they are making and preparing hot food, you would just separately classify it. Like I said in the example, those operations are, there's a footnote that directs that 9079 is separately classified, so you're, there isn't really a threshold to use that class. And then bakeries and grocery stores, are the counter people classified as 2003 or just the bakers? So the baking department, the, any bakers would be classification 2003. Yeah, and then um, that's the baking department. Brian, did you want to chime in on that? I think you had something to say. Yeah, with regard to the 8006 uh, suffix one footnotes, they're directing that certain departments be separately classified. And so you'll see this especially with regard to hot food. You might have a hot food department where you can go and order food, some of which is hot food, maybe some of it's cold food. It's that department that we're going to potentially separately classify as 9079. So you might have people working within that department that don't cook hot food, for example, but only uh, ring you up at the counter. But if they're part of the hot food department, they're part of 9079. The same would be true with the bakery department as well as the meat department. We're looking for separate classification by department. And then another question, how do you tell whether it's a single business for repair? How do you tell if it's a single business or separately classified? So if it's, well, first, if you are looking at a store, because we're specifically talking about stores that have repair. So if you have a store that has repair, you're looking at whether 50%, uh, whether there's 50% or more of warranty repair, which would be a single enterprise, and that would all be included in the store class or if they're doing it on a fee basis, if the majority is on a fee basis, that's when you would separately classify the repair operations. And then you would be looking at the multiple enterprises rule, so you'd need to look at if those departments are physically separated. And a lot of times if you have, you know, 8018, which is pretty high rated, um, it might just all end up in the store class because there is interchange and that class is higher rated but you'd need to go through that analysis first. And then... Great. How about uh, delivery operations? You used the example earlier of an appliance store. Is there a difference between delivery and installation operations? Uh, yes, so a delivery is a general inclusion. So if you're purchasing an appliance from the store and they're driving it and dropping it off, um, then that would be a delivery that's a general inclusion to the appliance store. Um, but if they're doing installation, then um, that would be separately classified. And then I think there was another question about food trucks. So what would you class, how would you classify a food truck? We actually did a study on this a few years ago, and the food truck is classified based on the types of products they're selling, much like any other restaurant. So if they're a food truck that sells hot foods and they have a stove top in there and they're serving hot foods, then you'd classify it as 9079. Um, if they're selling just cold prepared sandwiches and salads, you could be looking at 8078. Or if they're just preparing beverages or 
ice cream or something like that, there's a different suffix for 8078. So just like any other food preparation, you'd need to look at what type of food they're preparing. And if it's served hot and they have they are cooking, then um, that would be 9079. And then also it could potentially even be 8017 if they're just selling packaged goods like chips and bottled water or um, some other pre-prepared items and there's actually no preparation on the um, food truck. And if you're not charging for a warranty, how do you determine that? So you wouldn't be charged for a warranty repair. That's included in the contract that you purchase the product when you purchase the product. Um, so that would be a way to differentiate it from anything that is charged, which would be for a fee basis. All right, we'll see if any other questions apply broadly to the group. Otherwise, if you have any other questions after the webinar, then you can email communications at wcrb.com. And again, any questions that we didn't get to today, we'll review after the webinar and email everyone out individually. And then we have um, another webinar on December 4th. It's an IBA Cal webinar. And then what's the topic on that one? New classifications. So the, um, any recent classifications that have been established. Thank you everyone for your time today and have a great rest of your day.